it's me again and I'm back with just as much energy and just as much crazy hair and my very thick Thelma Scooby-Doo glasses. My previous video, I did that all sans glasses. I didn't even put in my contacts. I just, I just did it staring blindly at the camera. But as you can see, I got some pretty thick glasses there. Well, actually, it's for you, it'd be like this. I got, I have terrible eyes. And I hope to get new eyes one day. Well, today I'm here to talk to you about another company I like, specifically their technology. Now, Metamaterials, if you invest in Metamaterials, you might like technology. You might like think about the future and think about technology. I like technology. There's different types of technology. Some people think technology is all digital and it's about algorithms and it's about the cloud and it's about computing speed and all these digital applications, facial recognition. That's a big part of technology. But then again, you have this analogous technology. You have this analog technology. What's analog? Well, you have digital. This computer, this is a digital camera right here. You have analog for all you youngsters out there. Um, when I was a kid, you had a camera and then you had to go get the film developed and, you know, it was, it was guess how the picture was going to come out. So photography was really, I mean, it's still an art form, but back then it was like, okay, we got to use different films for different sp If you wanted to take fast pictures, like fast moving objects, high shutter speeds, you had to get specific film for this. It was crazy. And you had to like roll the film. That's, that's analog. Uh, it was, it was a different time. Uh... Remember back in the old days where you had to crank the vehicle to give it that charge to start it? Today you have a battery. You don't have to do it as much. You don't have to crank. Although some vehicles, like Land Rovers, you can, you can crank them. So there's different technology. But they can have cross applications to each other. I'll cite NanoWeb from Metamaterials. You see, NanoWeb, so small, so diverse, so versatile. The pride and joy of metamaterials. This is actually a type of analog technology. So you have your traditional semiconductors, which are made of rare earth metals. And how metamaterials, which I like, really liked about the nano mesh, is it took less detrimental minerals. So you have these... You have two types of technology. You have digital, you have analog. Metamaterials, nanoweb is analog. It's a new type of analog technology. A lot of people don't realize analog technology can still evolve. It, it, we're still coming out with new analog technology, which I love. So nanoweb is analog in the fact that they, they took common elements already existing and common ways of doing things and they were able to redesign, recapitulate this into a new product. And it has a lot of digital applications. So it can conduct energy very well. It's a good semiconductor now. It took a while to get there. If you watch previous speeches of, of uh, Palakaris, he talks about that. Like, oh, now, now. He uses buzzwords like now. Now it has, you know excellent quality semiconductor capabilities. So, analog technology. Analog technology's been around for a long time. All right, it's, it's been around. We, we had cranes in medieval times. You had cranes, two, got two guys on a hamster wheel building the castles. That's how they built castles. There's actually a really good documentary, like a BBC, it's like History Now or whatever. And it's this woman named Ruth and she's like, the key medieval historian and they talk about you know why castles have certain holes and the, the these medieval cranes that they had it was crazy uh medieval cranes also helped build the charles bridge if you've ever been to the czech republic and in, in prahu uh prague 
there's the big long Charles Bridge. At the time it was built, it was like the most advanced bridge in Europe. It's pretty cool. Uh, they also have one of the astronomical clocks left in uh, Stari Namieste Miesto, uh, Old Town Square. Um, they they have this really amazing astronomical clock. It measures like what stars are in the sky. It's crazy. And this was in the 1400s. So imagine like being a, a farmer peasant. You go to the capital city of Prague. You cross this amazing bridge. Like you can just take your carriage your wagon over it and your horses you don't have to like use a ferry and a guy's pulling you across the river no you just go over this awesome bridge whoa watch there's this gif maybe i can put it in here there's this really awesome gif gif of how they built the bridge using those medieval cranes it's fascinating okay this is what i like i like this type of technology that's why i like nano web it's it's the you take an analog technology, but it's applied to a digital world. You can use it now in semiconductors. Power your computer. You can use the nano web to make transparent antennas. You can use it as a reciprocated wavelength propagation for microwaves. So you can either have it where radio waves pass through, or you can reciprocate it. And change the design, reciprocate the design so it blocks the waves, like in the microwaves. And this leads me to the company Camber Energy, CEI, and uh, their subsidiary Viking has obtained uh, IP rights, licensing rights, exclusive licensing rights to uh, this company ESG. And their carbon capture system and why I like this carbon capture system quite a bit. So this carbon capture system also uses a inverse, a reciprocated method of doing things. It's called the bottoming cycle power system. That's on, it's on the patent name, bottoming cycle power system. The technique it specifically uses to generate power is known as an inverted Brayton cycle. An inverted Brayton cycle. So a Brayton cycle is about compressing and expanding gases. All right. ESG, this, this bottoming cycle power system. That's their carbon capture and energy generation. It's not just carbon capture, it's energy generation. It's like, and it creates other commodities too. It's, it's all encompassing. It's very diverse and versatile. Again, much, much like NanoWeb. And it's all this analog technology combined to make a whole new system. So if you read the patent diagrams in the paper, the patent paper links below to everything. I like to cite my sources. I'm very thorough with that. Uh, basically, it takes this heat exhaust from combustion, traditional combustion engines, heat exhaust. You know, when you, when you combust things, it's a chemical reaction. You're going to have heat. And the heat transfer is part of combustion. That's why concrete gets hot and why iron is so slow. But if you exp if you if you do that rusting process fast, the iron oxidation process, it's you'll have some heat. Okay, it takes that heat, and the gas comes in, and what it does is it runs the gas through a vacuum. It sucks it in, and when you suck it in, it expands really quickly, and that creates a vacuum, right? So it sucks it in. Or you take a syringe with water and you pull it really hard and the water bubbles. Like if you go to space and you're exposed to the vacuum that stuffs the space, all the water on your eyes will boil out and the water in your tongue will boil out. You got to close your eyes. Uh, get, get the air out of your lungs. You can only survive in space for like a minute. Space is very scary. I, I don't want to go to space. <laughs> These are all things that scare me about space. Also, there's no sound in a vacuum. Yeah, I'm being funny. I'm, I'm a funny person. I like, I like to be funny. The gas expands rapidly. gets hot. And then it's cooled quickly. And when that gas condenses, because it's cooled, it produces distilled water or ethanol alcohol depending again on the source material 
So yeah, we have this rapid expansion and condensation. The heating and condensing of the gas uh, can lead to distilled water. Because it's a distillation process. It's just a different method of distillation instead of heating it in a traditional vat. And then it goes through the levels and then it goes through its condensing tubing where the water recapitulates uh, into its liquid form. Instead, we have where the gas is expanded and then compressed. But if you look at the diagram, uh, it offer it also offers a place for the liquid to escape in water form. And it talks about this. Uh, what figure was that? Uh, we refer to articles... 146, 132, 144, 164, and 142, and 134 for these. Uh, heating and cooling. Evaporation and condensation of the liquids to form distilled alcohol, water, whatever you want to do. How versatile is that? It's, it's very versatile. If you read this patent document, it talks about that. You can get ethanol from this. You can get a whole range of products depending on what the exhaust is. You can use this. This is very diverse. You can use this to get a whole range of products. You can use it to get ethanol. You can use it to get distilled water. The list goes on because this is an analog technology, but it has very many applications. All from heat exhaust, so it's great. It, it really starts creating that carbon system. We're going to capture the carbon, and we're going to use that residual heat energy for electricity. Don't, don't waste that heat energy. Why waste it? We're going to recycle the heat energy. Recycle your heat energy. Now, eventually, the heat energy will disappear because of entropy, and that's depressing to learn, and eventually, the universe is going to dissolve. As far as we know, that could be I hope that's wrong because that like gives me an existential crisis every time I think about it. So the bottoming power cycle with an inverted Brayton cycle. Uh, that's the technology it uses, inverted Brayton cycle, but this particular system is called the bottoming cycle power system. It filters the exhaust first. Thus using less energy to capture carbon. And it produces different commodities. Now you have distilled water. You have yucky water that needs to be abated and disposed of. Like fracking water. You have, you have sellable water. You can use it to produce ethanol. You can use it to produce a lot of things. You have residual power left over. Which you can use to power things. Uh, this is a very effective system. And the technology isn't too complex. Look at the diagrams. Um, yeah, we have some turbines and some filtering. That's going to be technology again, uh, depending on your filtering system. Depending on like what you're getting the exhaust from and what you plan to sell. That's going to determine, like, okay, what kind of filters we use. What kind of distilling. How long of a distill we have. These things can be easily changed out. Like, car parts and engine you know you can you can put like if you got a chevy truck with that crappy engine it, it goes from like eight cylinder to four cylinder and it keeps breaking you're like oh my gosh you can put like a oh. ls1 engine in there and we you're you're going so you can swap parts you could put some miata parts in your ford ford parts in miata the, the land rover no no, Land, Land, Land Rover special. <laughs> Land Rover special. Its own special parts. But we have some interchangeable parts. That's that's easy. Like when you're looking for a car, maybe you want a car with readily available interchangeable parts. That's a big one. With this, it makes maintenance really low, which is appealing to people who want to buy this. What if I want to buy this one carbon capture system, which is touted, but the parts are expensive and they're specialty parts and running this thing is going to cost way more than the tax incentives and the environmental incentives that will come out of it. What's the, what's the business point of that? Hemorrhage money, right? 
but with this vitamin cycle power system, it seems that a lot of these, because the technology is very analog and simple, uh, straightforward, like a lot of these parts can be interchanged depending on your use. And it's nothing too overly complex. So the parts used should be not as expensive. Which is great because now it's, you know, the operations cost just to run this thing is, is substantially reduced. And especially with the pre-filtering exhaust process, it'll save you a lot of money. That looks good on a... That's a if, if I'm going to invest in a business... Yeah, I want to see these financials. What measures are they taking to? I understand that you're not going to be product. You're not going to be profitable for the first several years. But you know, are you taking measures? What What are we using to be sustainable here to sustain the business? Not necessarily environment, but in a business, sustain the business. But you know, sustaining the environment, like I said, looks really good. It's goodwill and a balance sheet. And that's like a big buzzword right now. We're going to... Environmentalism is back in. It was like big in the early 90s. And you always saw videos, like cartoons of fish going in the the six-pack pop can or beer can rings. And they get stuck in there and cry and die. And you'd have to like cut them out. And so we're back at that now. We're back at that campaign of environmentalism which is good because you know our population is growing and our earth has you know limited resources we're in a closed system here we're in a closed system on earth we have limited resources now until we can expand out we're not there yet we're not quite there at expanding out and getting other resources and easily coming back in maybe one day i hope i hope we can do this otherwise Oh, time for another existential crisis. All right, guys. This is why I like uh, the ESG carbon capture and why I'm a firm believer in CEI. Um, I think that these analogous technologies that have a wide use of applications because they're simple, like NanoWeb is... Honestly, it's... And it's hard of it. It's simple. Metamaterials, nano. It's, it's a little tiny mesh. And you can weave it in certain ways. And you can make peaks and valleys in certain ways to change uh, what you need to do. But, you know, it's, it's simple. It's very versatile. It can be easily manipulated to suit your need. Same thing with this system. It's, it's a simple process. It can be easily changed. Parts can be changed, manipulated to suit your needs, therefore creating different saleable commodities, which offset the cost. And the interchangeability also offsets the cost. That's why NanoWeb is like really low cost semiconductors because, because of this analog technology that I really like. I'm not a fan of AI. I grew, I grew I'm an 80s kid, like Terminator. War Games, Skynet, AI, 2001. AI is scary. It can be scary. The singularity is near. Or maybe it's already happened. Okay. On that note, it is time to leave. So I'm not as abrupt. I will see you soon. Goodbye.